Yeah, go ahead. All right, can everyone hear me clearly? That's good. Uh, my name is Hans Krude, and I work for Red Hat on input for the X server and Wayland, mostly. And also some kernel drivers where necessary when we need to enable new hardware. Uh, today I would like to talk to you about uh, lib input and how we want to start using lib input even in the X stack, the X11 stack for the Azure server. We initially designed lib input to have a shared code base for uh, Wayland. Uh, so we want to have a, a unified place to do all the input handling because we saw that since with uh, Wayland the compositor is the display server, that everyone was implementing its own input code. And Peter Hutterer has a lot of experience doing the input stack in X, and he knows that it's not as, as trivial as it seems. It may seem easy when you do your own keyboard support or your own mouse support, but if you go to more complicated devices, it's actually quite tricky to get right. So we didn't want each Wayland compositor to invent the wheel themselves. So we started lib input. Lib input also was a great chance for, for us, or mostly for Peter, because he's been doing a lot of work in the past on this, to rectify some historical mistakes which he wants to kill for a long time. So we've been able in lib input to do a number of things differently than we're doing them in X. Uh, in the beginning we wrote, uh, or Peter wrote a little wrapper, uh, so a little X org input driver using lib input underneath, mostly to be able to test since Wayland is not really a day-to-day -day usable environment yet. And uh, that's ended up so well, working so well, that we now have the plan to stop maintaining the old drivers and just use the lib input wrapper everywhere. But that's mostly what this talk is about. We hope that lib inputs ABI is stable now with the recent 0.8 release. We cannot promise that 110% as we one can never, but we're pretty sure we got it right and we have everything we need and we won't. We'll, we will be extending the ABI, but we're hoping to not break compatibility. So why would we want to use lib input in X org? Uh, well, it's the only thing which people are currently actively working on. So as new hardware comes on the market and you want that supported, chances are better that it will be supported in lib input than in, say, XF86 input uh, synaptic. It's not entirely true. We're still doing some patches there. Think a bit of duct tape to the left and a bit of chewing gum to the right. But we're not really doing new feature development there or properly adding new hardware support. Actually, we have not been doing that for a long time. Lib input uh, already is better than the old X X org stack in a number of ways. Uh, a big way in which it's better is with regards to touchpads. The old Synaptics driver, which is the X org uh, touchpad driver, was designed for single touch touchpads. Everything else was bolded on with a bit of duct tape and some chewing gum. And basically, our support for multi-touch touchpads is horrible. And you especially note that once you have a clickpad. Right, as long as you have physical buttons, you don't really use multiple touch often, but if you have a click pad, you have one finger which is going to do the left or right click. And some of you may have noticed that if you put a finger down to do the left or right click, you can no longer move the cursor around and things like that. You need to first position the cursor and only then use the finger to click, and that's all fixed in lip input. So that's really the reason why we want to move to lip input, because that's one of the historical mistakes which we have been able to rectify, that we properly do per finger tracking, etc., in the touchpad handling. Another big problem with uh, the old XORG input stack is that uh, X enumerates input devices to UDEF and it tells a driver here you have go drive this EZDEF device. <coughs> each driver only knows, each driver instance only knows about a single device. Sometimes devices interact. For example, uh, uh, to do sort of poor man's uh, palm detection in Synaptics, we have something called disable while typing. But that's not in the driver. We have something called the sim daemon. You need to start a daemon inside your X session, which uses the X test extension to listen to key presses, and then tells the synaptics driver, someone is typing the keyboard. In lib input, we have a single contact. You create a contact once using, and then that's shared between all, all, all the driver instances of XF86 video or input lib input. Uh, so we can know about what's happening on other devices. That's also useful, I don't know how many of you have uh, one of the newer generation ThinkPads, which no longer has physical scroll, uh, physical buttons for the track point. Uh, people were used to be able to configure in the EZDEF driver that you could click the middle button and then scroll around to your track point. Now, they, they can no longer do that. 
that's not entirely true. There is some Ubuntu PTA, which has a Frankenstein driver, where all the drivers are just different dips are just clamped together and glued together in one make file, and it somehow works. But uh, not something which we want to support upstream, this Frankenstein driver. But in libinput, we can do this cleanly, and what we're actually doing there is we're injecting the top button presses into the, the flashpoint design. So if you look at it as an in X input event level, you will see the top buttons being emitted from the X input device, which is associated with the flashpoint. And we can do middle button scrolling and things like that. So uh, what changes were required to X86 input lib input? As I already said, we started this just as a testing toy, more basically just a to have something to use day to day. So we would be using our own, we would be dot putting our own input stack day to day and not only testing it when we were running tests. Uh, basic functionality like key presses, uh, moving the mouse pointer buttons were all there since day one. All we really needed to do wa was add a configuration API because users may want to use step to click on the touchpad or they may hate it. I'm one of the haters, I hate step to click because I, I, I end up clicking everywhere accidentally. So I disable it. So we need to configure, be able to configure some things. Right, so we, we needed an API that uh, the desktop environment, say GNOME or KDE or XFCE, would be able to configure uh, mouse acceleration, left-handed buttonness, uh, tapping to enable two-finger scrolling versus X scrolling. If you have a click pad, do you want to use the soft button areas? Usually they have marking at the bottom, like this is left, this is right. Or do you want to use the Apple method of if I click with two fingers, then it's a left click, and if I click with one, it's a full click finger. So we needed some, some support for that. That uh, actually landed in the 04 release, which was done December 5th, 2014. Uh, desktop environments. This is, uh, I hope some desktop environment people are here. If if not, then, well, we have al also been bugging them by via email, so hopefully they are aware of this. Um, first, an intermezzo about something which uh, we are going to take away some configuration options. And people always scream when we take away configuration options. We do this because the old stack is made of crazy stuff. There are really some really, really crazy hacks in there. Uh, to give you an idea, the most interesting example of crazy stuff in the old stack is something as simple as saying I want a, a left-handed button method, right? So I want my left click to turn into a right click. Yeah, so I want my right click to be a primary click and my left click button to be the secondary right click. So one is action, other is context menu. Uh, the way that works with the old stack is that you tell the X server at the server level, you don't tell it to the input drivers, they are not aware this is happening, uh, to swap the button event. So it doesn't matter which sort of device it is coming from, all button events for the first and second button will be swapped. Mm. What? Yeah, you can swap any random button to any random place. That's crazy stuff. As I said before, let's, let's not go there. You usually do it globally. It doesn't matter. Uh, a touchpad is a single device. Let's say I want to touch my swap my touchpad buttons because I'm left-handed. But I also, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, even if you do it at a single device level, it does, that's not how desktop environments use it, but it doesn't matter. Even if you do it at a, at, at a single device level, then it still won't work because a touchpad is a single device. And if you tap on a touchpad, then a synaptic driver will send for one finger tap primary button event. The X server will swap it and your one finger tap all of a sudden will be a context menu. And your two-finger tap will be a primary action. Now, how do you fix that if you're a desktop environment? Solution in the, the, the GNOME control panel, when you say left-handed button, it's, it swaps the buttons. And then it sees, if, is it a touchpad? And if it is, it reconfigures the tap settings. And it says, single finger tap is left button or uh, right button. And then that gets swapped at server level again, and it becomes a left button again. <laughs> so this is the kind of stuff which we no longer want to support. Right, all the random remappings of random buttons, it's just not really, doesn't have many practical use cases. I won't say none, but but this is how it currently works, especially the whole left-handed setting thingy is, is, is pretty crazy. And a lot of desktop, uh, KDE, for example, just gets this wrong, right? Because KDE has, uh, the base KDE distro has the base mouse configuration settings, and they do the button swapping globally. And the uh, touchpad settings up to recently were a third-party add-on, 
they've just been merged upstream. But up to recently, they were a third-party add-on, and they were not aware that the, 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 the core thing was doing the button swapping. So it, it just didn't work there. You couldn't use left-hand button setting in combination with tapping. So um, one of the problems which we had is when we started doing XS86 input lib input is we wanted to be backwards compatible. We wanted it to be a drop-in replacement and not require any desktop environment changes. But as we started looking into the large amount of options which desktop environments use and how they are used, uh, we came to the conclusion that that's not really doable or at least not desirable. Because there are too many combinations which we would need to support which we don't want too much interaction between different settings at the server level and the input driver level. And so we decided to just do a new uh, config interface from scratch. It's, it's using uh, X input device properties. You can do uh, on the command line X input list props and then a device number and you can see what you can configure for that device. I wanted to give a demo. So I upgraded my machine to the latest and greatest GNOME because that already has two integrations for actually using the new settings. So you can just click uh, enable tap to click and you will see a change in X input list props. But uh, it works as long as I unplug this cable. The current development builds of GNOME don't like having an external monitor. They crash. So I can demo it on this screen, but I cannot demo it on that screen. <laughs> so we're going to skip the demo. Uh, and if you have a new clean config interface, you can just do X input list on the command line and you will see all your devices and then you do X input list props device number and you can see which properties there are. And device uh, desktop environments are supposed to change their uh, config panels to use that. But we don't want them to throw away their old code. At least not for a while. right? Because depending on, on what they're running on and also depending on if they're running on say FreeBSD or something, uh, users may still be using the old driver stack. So our, our advice as input tech developers to desktop environment developers is add support for the new configuration API, but run timely checks which driver is in use and keep your old code. Just put a big if else block around it. Uh, for the new stack, do not use any of the core X interfaces. X has a mouse acceleration interface from 1984 or something. And you can configure two things. You can configure an acceleration threshold and an acceleration factor. But not all acceleration algorithms actually have a threshold. So it's really written for one specific acceleration algorithm, but we don't want to be locked into one algorithm because we may want to use a different acceleration algorithm for a touch pen for a mouse. So in lib input for uh, mouse acceleration, we are ignoring whatever you're telling the server, we're overriding it. Uh, at the X input level, and instead you get a scale from minus 1.0 to plus 1.0. So as a desktop environment, you just can make one slider, it goes from minus, well you probably don't want to show minus 1.0 and plus 1.0 to the user, but that's the scale you get. And 0.0 uh, means what we think is the best default mouse acceleration, minus 1.0 means as slow as this acceleration will go for this device, and plus 1.0 as fast as it will go. So very clean, uh, I know that UI designers will love this because before they had to make two sliders, one for the threshold, one for the factor, and try to explain to the end user what the bleep the difference between the two sliders was. Uh, well, this is the part which we're going to skip. So, so more about pointer acceleration, I already told you a bit about it, but we, we have been doing a lot of work in this area. This turns out to be a nasty area, and one of the things where lib inputs gives us sort of a clean start um, a big problem with pointer acceleration is that uh, mouse devices do not have the same amount of CPI or clicks per inch, right? If you had a really old mouse, it had, a, it had a ball in there and it would roll and then you had a wheel which would turn and it had spokes which were, would break a light uh, ray and every time the light ray was broken you would get a tick or a click. So uh, those, th <coughs> those mu mouse historically have something called clicks per inch which is how much bits basically they give you for every time you move it an inch or how much ticks or. Um, one problem with that is that old mice had 300 DPI or CPI 
a newer miles of 1000 CPI and you can also, if you buy a, a high end Logitech, you get up to 4000 CPI and use gaming mouses which go even further. Uh, in the old, the solution was, and this is something which even Windows doesn't get right, uh, in the old stack the solution was, well, you have an acceleri acceleration slider, just play with it. But that's not really nice because, uh, well, then if you change your mouse speed, you're also changing your touchpad speed and things like that, that would be an issue. And also if you just plug mouse or you have a docking station with a mouse and another docking station at home and you shoot different types of mice with a different uh, CPI, so a different resolution, then it wouldn't work very well. And also an acceleration algorithm making it slower is not the same as reacting properly to a mouse with a different amount of CPI. You will get a different feel if you don't first correct for the CPI. So what we're doing is we're normalizing uh, the resolution to a thousand uh, CP uh, CPI mouse. Uh, we're actually building a UDEF database for this. So we're using USB IDs to say, ah, this is this mice, we know this was this resolution. Because, uh, well, because hardware sucks, basically. Uh, for example, USB keyboards actually have a field in their hit descriptors which tells you which language the keyboard is for. No one uses that. Every operating system asks you what language layout does your keyboard have. Do you know why operating systems do not use this? because it is less reliable than just defaulting to something. What's in that field is utter nonsense. <laughs> uh, yeah, but when USB was introduced and the hit standard was introduced, a couple of chances were missed. One of them was to properly put the keyboard layout in a field that actually meant made that it was something which was useful. Another one is there is no such thing as resolution information for mice in the hit standard. Even worse, some mice, like gaming mice, has a, have a button to on the fly change the resolution. That does not generate an event. The OS has no clue to know you have changed your resolution on your mouse. So what we're doing for these gaming mice is we look at what the factory default resolution is and we take that. And if we change it, we lose, basically. Uh, so one thing which libinput brings is that you no longer have a global uh, mouse acceleration, we do it per device, uh, which is something which not all desktop environments will like, but the desktop environment can just still have one slider and use it everywhere and just apply it to all, all the devices. Uh, but if you want to be really fine-grained, you can be really fine-grained, or you could have two sliders, one for track points, one for mice, whatever. And hopefully one setting will fit all because we're correcting for the resolution of the mice, or we try to correct. Uh, very important last bullet item, provided that the hardware DD entry, so the UDEF hardware database is correct, right? We try to give you a reasonable behavior, a reasonable default acceleration corrected for mouse speed or mouse resolution, uh, assuming we actually know the correct resolution. If, if that's off, then all bets are off. Uh, what's interesting also is, uh, on which I wanted to also demo, but now I'll, I'll at least talk about it, is, is, is how the GNOME guys have, have solved uh, actually getting ready for lib input. Uh, this is interesting because uh, they have done a nice piece of back-end and front-end separation. Right? They are not directly talking to lib input in the front-end. In their UI, they are just changing some deconf settings. And then they have a back-end which listens to deconf changes and responses to that and also is run at initial login to apply your settings then. This is interesting because um, what they the, the upcoming 3.16 release will be fully lib input ready. It already is, unlike being multi-monitor ready, that it's not. And uh, what happens is they have put the actual applying of the input settings in Mother. Mother is their, their library which is contains most of their, their window manager, their shell. Um, Mother is, uh, is a good place to put it because they, uh, since libinput is also the input library which is used under Wayland, uh, the settings are identical between Wayland and X. Right? The, the settings which you can apply to a single device are identical. So what they've done is they have created an, 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 an abstract set of settings and an abstract, an ab abstraction for the backend to actually apply the settings and they have two implementations. They have a lib Wayland implementation for when you're running GNOME on Wayland. And that just calls directly into libinput, right? So they are the compositor, the compositor directly links to libinput, so they can just make C function calls and they're done. 
And then under X, they, uh, they, they know they're running under X, they have a different back end, and that just sets the X input property. So that way, actually, 99% of the code is the same under Raylan and under X, because they have a backend, separated backend and front end stuff and things like that. So then on GNOME Control Center, they, uh, there is an issue. GNOME Control Center basically just needs to show the configuration menu and update the, the DCOM settings, which is, is the, the GNOME configuration settings backend. And then Mother will pick it up and respond to those changes. Uh, but they d it doesn't make sense on a desktop to show trackpad settings. So they do need to know which devices are present on the system. And this slide may not be entirely accurate anymore because I had a discussion with one of the GNOME devs yesterday and they may do it differently. Their initial plan was to use UDEF and that might still end up doing that. And then have a little helper which runs through a UDEF rule which sets uh, properties in the UDEF database and then GNOME Control Center can look in the UDEF database and see is there any device which is a track point and if it's a track point does it support multi finger gestures. And because it doesn't make sense to show the toggle to change between two finger scrolling and edge scrolling if you have a single touch touchpad. Then you just get edge scrolling. Like you cannot use two finger scrolling with single touch. Uh, the plan is, was, is, they'll probably continue with, with this plan, which I still think is the best way forward, to make the libinput udev helper part of libinput proper, so of libinput.stream, and then the, those udev properties will just always be available on input devices and all the desktop environments can use them. So the future, um, this is happening for Fedora 22, which will be released in May. So in three or four months from now, you can download and install Fedora 22 and all the bugs should be ironed out, should be stable, and you will be using libinput while you're running GNOME on top of X. Uh, so this is happening pretty fast. Uh, X server 1.18, which will be released soon, will includes actually for the first time a driver again. Back in the past, we used to have the X386 3.something releases, and they were monolithic. You would get everything in the X world in one tarball. And then it was split out in a number of modules, separate libraries. The X server was separated, some applications were separated. Uh, we're coming to the conclusion that we may have made it a tiny bit too modular. I think there are 60 different tarballs or something. Uh, one of the plans is to at least make the X server work more or less standalone in a sort of basic minimal configuration so that if you build a new server and your drivers are still built for the old ABI version so they won't be able to load them in the new server, then at least you will get something on your screen. Well, we're there now with 1.18, the, 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 the mode setting driver, which basically can talk to any KMS device, is there. It won't give you 2D, 2D acceleration, but it will work with any KMS driver. So if you build and install uh, the latest X server and forget to upgrade your drivers, you will get video output but you will not get any input. You will see, ah, I have a login screen and you won't have a mouse, you won't have a keyboard. So the plan for 120 is to actually uh, take the next logical step and build in some input drivers. And we want that to be uh, X of 86 input lib input, that that will become part of the server proper, right? It will be the default driver. You can still use other drivers, disable it through a config file, but this will be the default driver in the 120 release. That's the plan. So uh, the message that I'm trying to send here is, uh, Linux distros and Linux desktop environments need to get ready, even if they're still staying with X, but a lot of will do because Wayland just isn't feature complete yet. Uh, get ready to move to lib input because that's where all the new development is happening. That's also, it's already better in a number of ways, especially, again, especially the touchpad experience is just much more pleasant because currently we sort of suck with touchpads on the Linux. Uh, so yeah, this, this is what's going to happen. And probably it spends way, too short an amount of time comparing to the full hour I have, but this is all I have to say, so I won't bore you with making up stuff. So, are there any questions? So, the, the one question is that the, the patch I was I got was for fixing the patch that you sent back, but they're not going to deal with the bug yet. Yes. They'll deal with the uh, patch notes, but now it's like they have to come up with something. Yes. But they've now really made up like a, a track button, a button here, a button here. Right, they, they are extra button one. Yeah. If you have a fixed kernel, then the middle button is extra button two, and they're extra button three. They're sending event codes, and that's, that's because they're using the same bits in the synaptics protocols, which they used years ago. Years ago, there were actual synaptics touchpads which had 
physical extra button next to left right. They have a couple of extra buttons that were usually used for scroll up, scroll down. So if you now have an X250 or T550 and you use the extra buttons, then they will scroll up and down your view as if you're scrolling. <coughs> uh, we are fixing this. We are working on it. We need a UDAV rule which will identify your touchpad as being interesting in a new, new in yet another new and broken way. And then you need a latest synaptic driver. This is one of the pieces of duct tape which we are adding to the synaptic driver so that people who stick with will at least get those buttons back. And we're also fixing it in lib input. And again, in lib input, the middle button will actually be usable to do touch point scrolling because there we can tie the two devices together. Something which we lacked in the old driver set. So very good question. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> well, you would you would need to port it to lib imp x x of eighty six input lib input. Uh, but other than that, um, yes, Peter wrote a very long blog post about why higher than eight bit scan codes do not work in X. Uh, I had a discussion with some GNOME guys about this, and also uh, the KDE, one of the KDE maintainers, Martin Bracelin, uh, last Friday. We had a cross-desktop meeting on subject of Wayland, so this came up like, we Wayland won't be ready for how, how, how for much longer. So can we do something to help X people who have scan codes higher than 255? Uh, one of the ideas is that maybe the lib input driver, the XORG lib input driver, would just create uh, a pipe, a file descriptor somewhere, which desktop environments can directly listen to. But that would then need support in the desktop environment. So we are thinking about adding duct tape for this. The problem is this higher, uh, th this doing something with scan codes which are higher than 256 problem is just not fixable in the same way in X. So you've created some duct tape. We are thinking about our own duct tape, but it, it will always be duct tape. You you, you can do the same thing, by the way, uh, which <coughs> might be preferable just by writing a hardwaredb.com template, right? The UDEV hardwaredb, you can remap the scan codes at kernel level. I have already, I have a Microsoft Office keyboard at home, which has like crazy keys, like start, uh, text, start spreadsheet, whatever. Those are in the high range. <laughs> and you, I'm remapping those with a uh, hardware, the UDEV rule. Um, well Martin wrote a blog post about it. What was the last name? There's a blog post about it somewhere on the internet. <laughs> so <laughs> so <laughs> specifically search for Microsoft Office keyboard for browsing. That one has a scroll thingy, which sends scroll up, scroll down button event. <laughs> and uh, yeah, there's a blog post about it. <laughs> Any more questions? So the question is, how easy is it to intercept any random event? I'll make it a little wider and turn it into any other wider event. If you know how to write C code and recompile lib input, it's doable. <laughs> uh, one thing which you can do for this is uh, not make lib input open the device. So add an xorg rule like ignore this device. And then have a little user space helper, which opens the EVDEV device itself and creates its own arc, its own view input device. So from user space, you can create EVDEV devices, which actually get their events pushed into them from user space. That's called the view input device. For really weird corner cases, that's sort of the direction you want to steer people. Like if you want to do funky shit and really weird remapping, just create your own artificial device in user space and do whatever you want then, because then you have everything which is possible under the sun. Interesting question. There is a branch which is 
where we're co slowly working towards tablet support, Wacom drawing tablets and other vendor drawing tablets, same stuff. Uh, that's currently sitting on a branch because we believe it's ready, but we also want to have the Wayland bits ready. Those are also close to ready, they're sitting on a Wayland branch. But now we want to have at least one consumer of the Wayland protocol, so we're working on getting it up and running in GTK and then in the GIMP. And once we have all that ready, we have a bunch of branches to support for tablet support that we can push. But we don't want to push any of them until we have the entire chain so that we're sure we get all the APIs right. So uh, uh, drawing tablet support is coming. Uh, joystick support, we're thinking along the lines of, this is really complicated, we don't really need it in a windowing system. Uh, what we may do, if there is a demand for it, and we think there is, is uh, add an API to say, give me an easy dev file descriptor. So that in a game, instead of needing to have new dev rules which open up the joystick device to the world, you can just ask the windowing system, hey, I'm a game, I know you have this raw easy dev device which you don't want to ha handle otherwise, but please give me the file descriptor for it. The advantage of doing that is that we then also can do focus management, because easy dev file descriptors can be revoked. So when you alt tap away from the game, we'll just revoke the file descriptor, and when it alt taps back, we'll give it a new one, like uh, here is your joystick again. And then we would need support for add to add support to say SDL to handle that and other gaming libraries. So that's the plan for joystick. Other funky input devices we also have a plan for there are input devices which do not fall into any categories. Like you have these boxes which have six a grid of 16 buttons, 4x4, four four, and you can assign any random value to the buttons with the ID using special software. Uh, and there's more funky, interesting stuff like pedals for music, musicians, and whatever. Uh, we, we're going to try to make something which we call a button box interface. And a button box is a box with a bunch of buttons and or dials and or sliders and or whatever. <laughs> and uh, those will all be abstracted away there. So that could in theory also be used for the joystick. But we're thinking that for joysticks especially because we usually also want to do force feedback. Which also goes via the easy dev file descriptor that will just hand out the, uh, the easy dev file descriptor and be done with it. So we, we see this as a compositor slash desktop environment problem, depending on if you're talking X or Wayland. GNOME has a whole bunch of code and heuristics to figure out, oh, we know this is a touchscreen which is integrated into the monitor. It's an absolute input device which integrates. So we shouldn't map it to both monitors, but still the mapping to one. And X already has APIs for that to do that as a desktop environment. So this is mostly a problem of, of the higher layer from our point of view. We offer APIs to say restrict the coordinate system to this monitor. And then from that point on, it's up to something higher, some settings manager to act. But for example, with drawing tablets, you have the same problem, right? With a Wacom tablet, you can say, I have a multi-monitor setup, but uh, a Wacom is absolute input, but I want my tablet to only map to one monitor, which is where I always run my GIMP or whatever. Uh, we have a configuration applet for that in GNOME, right? So you can go to console settings and then go tablet, and you can say, map this tablet only to this monitor. That's something which we can never already get, right? because we don't know what the user wants to do. In the case where, where the touchscreen is physically attached to the monitor with some heuristics, we can usually detect that. That it's attached to a monitor and to which monitor, and then we should auto map. But that's a problem which we've just pushed up to the higher layer, so we don't go fix it. No. <laughs> So the question is, what if I have a user who insists on using static configuration for everything? Um, that should still be possible. Do we need to write different xorg.conf? Because you can specify your input properties directly from xorg.conf files. You don't need to rewrite your config files for the new situation. You can also always keep uh, using the old drivers, right? We will at least keep them compiling for a while. <laughs> and 
are working the way they used to work. So, but well, if users start moving to things like like the new 450 laptops, so that's one example for which we specifically already added some duct tape to Synaptics. At one point, we'll maybe stop doing that, right? So at one point, we do want people to use. But for now, but once once you move to Wayland, this is all gone. And Wayland, we just do UDEV and we do autoconfig, and we don't want people to use config files wherever possible. Yes. What's the version of the X server we re require for running libinfo? 1.14 will work. That's the oldest version I've used at least. I don't see any specific reasons why it wouldn't work with something older, but cannot make any promises. Support for calibration at the driver level. That's that's an interesting one. We have had some discussions about that. We don't really have an answer there yet. We do. It's not completely true. We have uh, lib input will pick up a UDEV property, which is called calibration matrix, or something like that. You would need to look up what the ex actual name is. So if you add a UDEV rule for your which contains the calibration data, then lib input will pick it up, and it will work under X, and it will work under Wayland, etc. We just need a tool to generate those UDEV rules. Right, like I want to calibrate my touchscreen with each calibration. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think we have the the, the we only have the four po points. So it's the same algorithm as what you had in X. If you want something fancier, uh, patches are welcome. We're willing to discuss that. Um, yes. So, to be clear, for the video source of the question was some touchscreens, mostly resistors touchscreens, only work with a bunch of weird libraries which are not standard chip by distributions like PSLib and XF86 input PSLib. Is lib input going to fix this? And the, the short answer is yes, uh, because I have a number of those touchscreens and I want them to work. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yes, this is going to work. I think it will even work now, actually. We just need to, to have a driver, which one of the problems with uh, PSLib supported touchscreens is they come with Android drivers, and Android drivers don't properly implement the EVDEV spec. We will not support those Android drivers. We need a fixed up driver. But once you have that, then it should actually already work with lib input. But again, we need to write the UDEV rule which sets the calibration points. And we may want to make that easier or offer a program as part of lib input to generate such a rule. Or yeah, there's that's not a solved problem yet. But Definitely on the way, though. Thank you. So uh, the question is, joysticks, I mentioned providing a file descriptor. It will be an EVDEF file descriptor. It will just be a raw kernel file descriptor. So you can do everything which you can do if you were to open dev input EV EV event something. Because that's uh, uh, EVDEF file descriptors are sort of unique nowadays in the kernel that they have a revoke IOP call, so we can just hand them out, and whenever the focus changes, we can just revoke, and then uh, the application, the first time it tries to use the file descriptor again, will get an error, yeah, this one is revoked, sorry, and then when it gets focused back, it gets a new file descriptor. So that way we can actually do focus handling with joysticks, which is something which we cannot do under X11, uh, and still not worry about the plethora of joystick options and force feedback stuff and everything which comes there. We can just say, oh, that's best left to gaming libraries. At least that's that's our view for now. In the future, we'll see if that's the right view or if we need to add a specific protocol. Or yes. That's a very good question. So uh, the question is, if I may translate it, what's going to happen if the game says to a force feedback device, vibrate very heavily, and after that you all tap away and it's the game loses focus and it cannot stop the vibration? Um, currently, nothing happens. It just keeps vibrating very loudly. <laughs> it's a good point. Uh, it's a very interesting one. I think this is, uh, this is something which needs to be fixed at the kernel level, actually that when an evoke is done, that whatever force feedback is running gets turned off. 
because uh, yeah, it's rule of external API problem. You know, I've talked to David Herman about this. You know David Herman? Just drop him a, mail, him a mail. I think he's the guy who should look into this. He came up with the whole evoke principle, so he can fix it. Keyboard left. I think the idea there is that, yeah, you could ask David Herman to think about this, but I think what basically is when you get a new file descriptor, you reinitialize the left to what you want them to do. Right, so it's then up to the new application to put the left in the same place. Because the old application doesn't know which the new application is going to be, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. If you create your own new input, we, we basically we use a whole bunch of heuristics to decide what something is, right? If it has relative axes and a couple of buttons, it's probably a mouse. And you can just look at the code which we have, and then if you proper your new input device, you structure it properly, so you give it the right types of axes, et cetera, we should recognize it as what you want it to be. Yes, that's pretty much unchanged. Yes. Yes, TSLib is something we want to go away. And libinput pretty much already has equivalent functionality, except we don't have a calibration app. But if you know the calibration data and you put it in the UDEF attribute, then we will pick it up and your resistive touchscreen should just work if the touchscreen driver properly implements the EVDEF API. Because a lot of the Android drivers just do crazy stuff, right? They've never read the documentation, they just send some random events and TSLib actually has code in there like, this is not supposed to happen, but we'll deal with it anyway because Android devices do this. That's pretty much, I, I think they even have comments like that in there. And we don't want to go there. We don't want to guess what, if we're getting a an, 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 uh, type of event which is not supposed to be emitted for a single touch event. For example, a number of Android devices are sending multi-touch events for single touch touchscreen. Because I think the old Android versions wouldn't respond to single touch events because they only supported multi-touch. So they just hacked up the driver to pretend multi-touch would, would always only one finger. And yeah, that's we don't want to go to supporting those kinds of hybrid thingies which were specially made for Android. And I know that all the touchscreen drivers which are in the upstream kernel are properly reviewed to actually do the right thing and then it should just work. Yeah, well, uh, as I said before, with the question like, what if, what if I want to turn random events into random other events? Write a little helper program which opens the role EVDEF node, create a U input device which then emulates multi-touch but only a single finger, and then Chrome is happy. And we're happy too because we don't need to support crazy stuff. <laughs> we really want to get out of the world of pain where people do really crazy setups and then shout at us when we break it. Right, because X has a long history of backwards compatibility and a long history of making everything under the sun configurable. I don't know if you've ever worked with old XP uh, toolkits apps. There are two X resources, so you can configure everything. Right, you can replace random labels and random apps and things, and it's it's very configurable. But that's definitely something where we want to get away from. So, are there more questions? Thanks for your time.